Hi everyone, there was a long time no video from me. Let's start with making of something first. Some time ago I mentioned that I'm building a system that will analyze composition of gas inside the Nixie tube and today I want to push this system a little bit forward. I will explain what I want to do with the system later, but for now just quickly we want to connect the Nixie tube to the metering valve which is here and we will sample the gas from here to the ultra high vacuum chamber and uh, in the chamber we will have a residual gas analyzer that will uh, that will analyze composition of the gas and it will create nice charts like this for each atomic number it will create a line and we will be able to compare the individual like the the composition of the gas of the good tube bad tube and and, and this uh, for today what i want to do uh, i am planning to fix a leak which i detected here on the turbo molecular pump which will create a vacuum here is our chamber this is the chamber itself here we have the most important part this is the residual gas analyzer here we have a vacuum sensor uh, this is the metering valve where we will let the air or the gas from the nixie tube to enter the chamber and this is the turbo molecular pump there is a small small leak where air is entering the chamber so we need to disassemble it and open the open the turbo and replace the o-rings now it's time to check it for leaks with leak detector which is the machine over here You need some time to get calibrated. Before it starts, we can hook it up to the chamber. So it's ready for leak checking. What we are going to do now is to evacuate the chamber, like make vacuum here and spray helium around it. We have the pumps here, so if the helium enters the chamber, it will go through here to the system. And here is a mass spectrometer, so it will detect the helium and it will, it will tell us that there is a leak. So now it's making vacuum. You can see here the pressure inside the chamber. This is the amount of helium it detects, like there is always some helium inside, so it needs some time to remove the helium. So we can see that the helium scale is going down. Ah. Looks like we still have some leak in the, in the system. So again... Of course we have a leak, the one on the turbo pump, but in this case it looks like we have also a large leak which is preventing us from reaching a vacuum where we can actually do the leak test. The pitch of the tone tells us the amount of helium. So we still have some leak in the system. This is a source of the helium. Turn it on. So first quick test that the helium is flowing from the copper tubing and now I can spray the helium around and now when the tone goes up we know that the helium is entering the chamber so we know that there is a leak. I'm tightening the clamps to make sure that the helium is not entering around the clamps. Yeah and here and now you can see that the machine turn off the, the test. So maybe initially it wasn't a leak on the o-ring but it was a leak somewhere somewhere else so the leak seems to be somewhere somewhere here yes I think I get it there is a small hole inside I wasn't able to pump it down to some reasonable pressure where I would be able to search for the leaks and um, then I found that there is a small pinhole in the glue so maybe maybe the pinhole is the source of problem so what I'm going to do now, I will turn on the helium leak detector again and I will 
cover the pinhole with leak sealant and then we will see if it helps. So let's start another cycle. No, it didn't help. So we need to disassemble the pump again. I think I see the problem. The O-ring is damaged here, so I will replace it and try again. Okay, looks like it's here. It's not this O-ring, but it's O-ring which is here. Because the signal is stronger on this place than here, so we'll try to replace another O-ring. Okay, so I'm running out of ideas, so I will remove the turbo from the system and I will try to connect it straight to the, straight to the leak detector. Let's do it. This line here is from the, from the knife edge. So there is no rubber, no O-rings, it's just metal to metal connection, which is very good. Now we need to take this blanking cover from here and put it here and we will get closed system. What we got is a minimum chamber, which will be much easier to test for leaks. So I will take this and put it on the leak detector. And at this moment when I was tightening the screws to put more pressure on the o-ring inside I found the problem. Listen to the to the tone. It's fluctuating when I'm putting pressure on the screws, which means that there is a connection which is opening and closing with applying the pressure on the screws. The confusing thing might be that I'm not spraying the helium around. It's now in the room, all around the tube or in all the connections, so I don't need to spray the helium. The only other seal where the helium could enter the chamber is this epoxy seal. So I'm covering it with a leak seal on to see if it makes any difference. So, it seems that the leak disappeared. You can hear that the tone is not responding to the spraying of the helium, which means that there is no leak anymore. Yes, looks like. Okay, so it's weird. I will not play with this anymore and I will replace all the bottom part of the, of the turbo.
So final test after replacing this bottom part. So let's hope that it will be fine. It looks good. There is no response to the helium. So it means that we fixed the leak. Uh, the strong signal that we are getting is because everything is now saturated with helium. The machine, the air inside the room, everything. So it will take a couple of hours to get rid of the helium. Next step will be to unpack a roughing pump, so let's go for it. So here it is. It's the first piece of vacuum equipment that I purchased straight from the manufacturer. All the other equipment came second hand. It's bigger than I thought. Okay, so there is no manual, so let's try to figure out how it works. Good, looks good so far. Oh, it's silent, it's really silent. So we are at two times 10 to minus one millibar. There are some other buttons, so let's try what they do. Huh? This is like reduced power and there are some other buttons, what they do? Hmm, nothing automatic. Okay, it works. Okay, so the pump is in 10 to minus 2 region. This is what we need for our turbo pump so we can move it to the lab. I have just one sensor with CF flange, all the other ones are with KF, so let's hope that it works. Moment of truth. It's glowing red, which is never, never good. Yes, it works. I like how silent the pump is. It's really a difference compared to oil pumps. One small problem on the project has been fixed and uh, now we need to test all the other parts. Like we need to spin the turbo, we need to see if the vacuum sensor is reading the values correctly and uh, the residual gas analyzer. And once all these things are done, we will disassemble the chamber and clean all the mechanical parts and put it all together and try to reach the ultra high vacuum. I've never get above 10 to minus 6 mini bars, like I ne never got from high vacuum to ultra high vacuum. So this will be first time and I'm sure there will, there will be a lot of problems that we will need to solve. So it will be a very exciting project. And um, once we have the chamber, we will start solving the problem how to get the gas from the tube to the chamber without contaminating it with, with air or with, with the actual tubing that will, that will bring the gas to the chamber. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. In the next videos, I would like to give you an update about the H2 project uh, and uh, I would like to talk more about the renovation of our space because what we are doing right now is to uh, split the manufacturing space from the development space and uh, implement 5S system in the manufacturing space. So that, there's a lot of topics to talk about and I hope to find some time to make the videos again. So see you next time, bye!